stick around and let's get the show on the road here. All right, so today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Uh, the audio from this filming got a little destroyed with the wind. Uh, it's my fault, so I'm going to be doing a little bit more voiceover than I have in the past. Uh, I do want to start out by thanking everyone that has given us some support and criticism over the last few months. Uh, we've got family, friends, and people we don't even know that have subscribed to this channel. And I just want you to understand that it really means a lot to us. Uh, if, if you've got to this video and our channel strictly based on the content that's in it and you are not subscribed yet, please, please, please do so. Uh, it means so much to us and it really makes a difference when YouTube looks at their analytics and where they're going to put us in front of other videos. So let's get started. I want to add some history as to exactly where this attachment had come from and the company behind it. So I did a little digging on Wikipedia and this is some of the information that I came up with. The company was originally known as the Walker Sims Paw Company in the late 1800s and they operated out of Atlanta, Georgia. In 1902, a group of partners, which included Clyde Lanier King, had purchased the company and they had went through some several name changes and eventually had landed on the King Plow Company. On the original site, they had operated out of a 165,000 square foot plant. And at the height of manufacturing, the King Plow Company had employed 300 workers. But due to a decline in sales, they ended up closing their doors in 1986. In 1990, the owners of the factory had decided to redevelop the facility. While preserving its history and architecture, they were able to provide spaces for artists and businesses to operate out of and since then has been branded the King Plow Center. So if you're as frugal as I am, you're looking at this and you're thinking, it's not that bad of shape. And you'd be right, because we think alike. I got this for roughly $500 when I bought my original tractor, and I was kind of thinking the same thing. You know, you look at some of the prices on the newer ones, you, you've got ones that are made with angle iron, and they're probably going for this size somewhere around the $500 to $600 range. And if you look at the exact same construction that this is, even though this disc is probably just as old as I am, a fully steel boxed frame at five foot is probably gonna be looking at somewhere between $1,000 and $1,200. It all depends on where you buy it from. 